Hello again. All right, we're back for a little bit more review of the unit on functions, our first unit. So what I'm going to do is since we started kind of in the middle, I'm going to go to the back and kind of work my way backwards. Okay, so here's what I want to remind you. And this is related to when you have to graph some transformations, like as in take a graph, so an existing function and transform it in a specific way. So just a key reminder. I would recommend using a table, all right? And so what I would recommend doing is making a table for the original function and then transforming that. And I'm gonna do letter A over here. So this is, we'll just call it f of x, right? As it says. So the table for f of x would look like this. We would go with Let's say we've got negative five, six. We've got negative two, three. I'm gonna use zero, zero also, just to make sure I get this curve correctly. And two, two, right? One, two, three, four. I could use more points if I wanted to, but that should, that should get the job done. Okay, so I need those four points. And then I'm gonna look at letter A, and I'm gonna recognize that this interior point five means that I'm going to dilate x by factor of 2. So what that means is when I create my new table of values for letter A, I'm going to take all the x values and I'm going to multiply them by 2. So that's what that dilation means. So 2 times x. So it means Negative 5 is going to turn into negative 10. Negative 2 is going to turn into negative 4. 0 isn't going to change. And 2 is going to turn into 4. And then the negative 1 means I'm going to shift down. So that means I'm talking about the y values. 1 unit. So that means I'm going to take all the y values and subtract 1. So 6 is going to become, so all of these y values. So 6 is going to become 5. 3 is going to become 2. 0 is going to be negative 1, and 2 is going to be negative, sorry, not negative 1, 1. So I want you to notice that what I did to y had no effect on x. It's not like I had to go back and edit the table on the left-hand side. And so that's why the order in which you say vertical or horizontal transformations, meaning do you go vertical, then horizontal, or horizontal, then vertical, that's why it doesn't really matter because they don't alter each other. It just matters if there's multiple vertical or horizontal that you say those in a specific order. All right. So that being said, I'm going to have to zoom out for a second so that I can plot all these points together. So then negative 10, 5, negative 4, 2, 0, negative 1, and then 4, 1. And so now I have this shape that looks like this. All right, and ask yourself, does it look like we dilated? Did we stretch it out a bit by two? It looks bigger, like wider, and it looks lower. So mission accomplished. All right, so working backwards, I just want to remind you that when we're asking for new function, which transforms g of x, using these transformations. So this is saying, you know, y equals vertical shift down three, horizontal dilation left five. That's gonna be like g of x plus five, because we do the inverse of what we think we're gonna see, minus three, right? And then if it's a vertical dilation, remember that that just looks how you would expect it to look. So 0.5 stays 0.5, or you could write uh, a half g of x, right? Either one of those would be totally acceptable. All right, and then now there's this question. Now I'm not going to get too in the weeds on this explanation because we're going to talk about this in a different context later on throughout the course of the year. But here's the thing. Even functions are symmetric about the y-axis. So even means that if you have a point x, y, the same point is at negative x, y, okay? And odd functions mean that if you have a point x, y, then there's like a 
I shouldn't say same. Sorry, there's like a corresponding for the symmetry. And then there's a corresponding point at negative x, negative y. So whenever you want to determine algebraically if you have some type of symmetry, the symmetry test is to take f of x and change it to f of negative x, okay? So f of negative x in this particular example would be negative x squared plus 6. Okay, so then after you do that substitution, so this is kind of like step one. Step two would be to simplify whatever expression you just created. So this would be a negative x squared would just be positive x squared plus six. And then three would be a little bit of analysis. So analy analyze, all right? So is the function that I got, x squared plus six, is it the same? And the answer is yes. So same means we are even. If I had gotten a completely opposite function, then that would mean I am odd. And if I'm some like combination, then I'm neither, okay? So that is just a quick refresher on even, odd, and neither functions. Okay, so getting back into it on some other types of functions and working with them, I am going to take a look at i. Now, i, j, and k are essentially all the same problem. They're just asking you maybe to do a slightly different thing because maybe you have a slightly different function that you are working with. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think that the problem that I would like to do is maybe i. So I've got to scroll back up for a second. So that's this function, the 2x squared minus x plus 7. So okay, as a reminder, in this situation we're going to drop an entire function in place for g of x because we know g of x is 2x squared minus x plus 7. Remember, that's what the equal sign can mean also. It can mean something is something else. Okay, so that function is equal to 12. So then if I subtract 12, because by the way, anytime you have a quadratic, the first thing you should do is set it equal to 0. And then once you do that, you should ask yourself, is there any way to factor this? And from my estimation, it looks like no. There's no way to rewrite this so that the 2 and the 5 are in such a way that the middle term is going to end up being 1. So if that doesn't work, then we have to use the quadratic formula. So remember, 2 is a, the negative 1 in front of x is b, and the negative 5 is c. So x is the opposite of b, e, so it's positive 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So x is negative 1 plus or minus. And then the place where I often see people, sorry, sorry, I just hit the mic for a second. Um, the place where I see people make the mistake most often is in this circled area, the discriminant. So just remember, take the negative 4 times the 2 times the negative 5 first. So that's negative 8 times negative 5. So that's positive 40. And you're adding that to 1. So it's like you're doing all of this stuff, including the negative. All right. And so then that ends up being 41. And because 41 isn't prime and it doesn't have any nice, you know, perfect squares hiding in it, you can't simplify that root any further. So you can leave it just like that. All right. And then let's see if there's anything else I wanted to do for you guys. All right, I think the last thing I want to do is just one more example of writing a piecewise function for you. So 6a, all right? So as a reminder, I would treat each piece as its own problem for you to handle, okay, and write an equation for it. Remember thinking about what does that like uh, piece look like. So like this guy looks like y equals mx plus b. 
So that means I'm looking for a slope, which looks like 1. And it crosses the x-axis at 0, so x. And then I'm trying to figure out where it starts or ends. So it looks like the graph keeps going until x gets to negative 1. So until this is going to be graphed wherever x is, sorry, less than negative 1. And then we have our parabola, right? This is some sort of x squared function, but it's up off the origin. So that means it must be x squared plus 1. And that happens between negative 1 and 2, right? So less than x, less than 2. And since those are both closed dots, they're going to be equal twos. And then this last one just hangs out at negative 1, and that's when x is greater than 2. All right? So there you go. And by the way, um, I won't do the whole thing, but I do want to point out that it is possible for an answer to be none, right? There aren't any x-intercepts. There aren't any y. Oh, sorry, just kidding. <laughs> there is one. It's at 0, comma 1. Silly me. Uh, so yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, now, the full answer key for this entire review packet is posted on Schoology. So you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, you remember, this is not required. This is not an assignment you have to put in your portfolio, but it is good practice. So make sure you try a little bit of it. Hopefully this felt helpful to you. All right, you're going to crush that test. It's going to be awesome. All right, you guys have a good rest of your day.